had a great question today from one of our newest home team members who basically is good at articulating questions even already that I think pretty universal. So I thought it might apply to more folks here. And it's just related to this difficulty of he's just now kind of waiting into game development. And, you know, first kind of seemed to be going just fine, following steps in the tutorial and introductory video and so on. In this case, it's our same course. You can actually find it, codeyourfirstgame.com. The free intro course is just the one he's referring to. And then realizing the kind of open ocean that is all that there is to learn about, even say JavaScript in this example, which of course is the same thing to apply for Unity C Sharp, for C++, for Unreal Engine, for Godot, for Python, whatever it is you're thinking about doing, recognizing how deep that field goes. It can kind of actually be an added difficulty from feeling like, I don't know, discouraging or seeing how much more there is to do. And this is a thing that I'm glad you articulated because I work with a lot of people on precisely this kind of challenge. Because no matter whether they're getting into any kind of programming, any kind of software development, or for that matter, not related to code at all, right? If they're focusing on the art side, 3D modeling, if they're doing audio and music creation, if they're doing level design, story writing, whatever the thing is, recognizing just how deep that rabbit hole goes. And that as a part of that, a, a, a hidden soft skill we have to work on, right? Often we talk about soft skills, we're often thinking about giving presentations and collaborating with teammates and... Obviously, my video just recently was also about another kind of soft skill was kind of like going easy on yourself and giving yourself some space to recover and being your own healer in a way. Another soft skill I think it's important to kind of put a lens on and to appreciate in yourself and need to develop is the ability to be comfortable with not knowing everything there is to know about it before you start doing what you can with the parts you know. And so I think I've got even my way older video, been a while, so let's revisit this idea of... Well, the way I use Blender, right, which is an extremely sophisticated, extremely complex 3D modeling package, totally free. Right? I'm not just trying to pitch you on it. Go check out Blender.org, probably. I don't know. You can look it up. Blender, the 3D modeling package, it has a thousands upon a thousands of menus and options and buttons and things and values and modifiers, whatever. I use very few of those, and I can still make a lot of kinds of models. Now, I'm not saying what I produce is Pixar quality or even necessarily professional game studio quality. Modeling is not my core area strength so much as technical game design production and so on but you can get a lot of results right even though i don't know everything there is to know about javascript and i'm pretty open about that despite having taught hundreds of thousands of people how to use javascript and having released more than 50 some odd games that involve writing javascript programming there are parts of the language i've never touched and don't really know in fact having worked with a bunch of other people who are also javascript professional engineers in their respective fields not always games some of other adjacent fields that also use JavaScript for web development, one of the interesting things I've discovered is that we'll have hyper-experienced, professional-tier, senior-level JS programmers who occasionally will almost have some difficulty navigating one another's code because their approaches, their, their dialects, their versions of using this very versatile language that has so many sides to it is so wildly different. You'll see the same thing among C++ engineers and other folks where at the advanced level, there's all these little de details and nuances and ways to use it that you could spend the rest of your life learning and still maybe not ever grasp all of it. Or if you could, it might not even be in the service of you using it better and you shouldn't let it stop you from doing things with it. I think an example I used for this in my self-command productivity audiobook, I think it's that one, it might be self-doubt, but they're bundled together. So either way, you'd have the same message, is the idea that we shouldn't expect ourselves to master the dictionary before we can start telling stories, speaking, using language. You figure out the parts that you can get a handle on you do what you can do with them, and then that is how you start to grow what you know, right? This is why we develop language this way. It's why we develop so many different skills that we have. Is basically, again, use what you can from what you know, build out from there. And what this is great as is a filter is it helps you weed away the other 90%, 98% maybe, of stuff that isn't really ever going to be useful to you. Most words in the dictionary, you will never need to know, right? Period. Will never even come up for you. And so instead what we do is we use the words that we need, that we know, that we have access to. Occasionally we see one in one or two ways, right? We're like, okay, well, here's one word I don't know. Then we go look up that one specific word. Or we're trying to come up with it. We're trying to phrase an idea. We can't figure out, okay, what's a good term for this? Maybe we go visit a thesaurus in that case. But that's where we go fishing for. There's probably a word that I don't know. Let me figure out what that word is. And it's exactly the same learning approach we use for game programming. It's the same approach we use for 3D art. Same approach for making game music or otherwise do what we can until we hit the limits of it. And at that edge is where it's easiest to then narrow our search for what is actually going to be applicable for me to take this knowledge and slot it in right here where I'm at. It's one of the reasons why it is not a usually productive path for someone to learn game design or game development 
to just go watch hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of talks that are on YouTube, right? They might be great talks. They might be by seriously experienced, capable, competent, accomplished game designers, game developers. But if what that person's explaining isn't somehow adjacent to what you are ready to plug into an actual problem you're working on on your project, it's it's either not going to stick or it may never even apply. Just like learning, like think you're going to learn a language better by flipping to a random page of the dictionary and picking a word. How likely is that going to be the word that you need to use now or ever? It's why instead our guided approach in home team is really, I mean, you build whatever you feel like building. The project leads are just members too who pitch projects they want to make and get my help to make. Members help them out on it. But what it means is that they're putting themselves in situations where they're in a project. They're building a real project, solving real puzzles and real problems where there's not some answer key to, confer, to check against. And then that helps guide their search for, okay, well, to make this next feature work, this thing I planned to happen on week seven out of 15 or whatever our schedule length was for that project, I got to go learn this concept. Suddenly, some subset of those hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands of videos that are out there are useful to us because they help us address a specific problem that we're up against. But that we can't let the fact we haven't learned that yet stop us from starting down that path, from making that plan. And this is, again, kind of one of the things we also practice getting comfort in. Our leads are always planning out their projects, as you kind of will as you're doing any kind of thing beyond following a step-by-step -step tutorial and kind of outgrowing that stage of your personal development and, and software proficiency and so on, making plans that are going to require learning along the way, where you don't necessarily know 100% of what you're going to do between now and when you finish. I, I think I refer to this too sometimes as, you know, I've, I've taken contractor gigs and other stuff where I was 85% sure I knew how to do it, trusting myself and setting myself up with time in between planning for how am I going to fill that extra 15% and figure that out. But that's how we grow. That's how we learn stuff. That's also why you only need to learn enough to get started. You only need enough to get a foundation to start rolling with it. You only need to watch maybe a few hour tutorial to get enough foundations to start messing around, trying some things. Then when you start running into actual problems that apply to your specific context, your specific project, your personal goals and direction you want to use this platform for, start steering that path that way. One other thing I also came up in this kind of chat with them is uh, referencing that Jonas Botel, subnautical lead engineer, one of our very advanced Unity trainers available to meet with some members and home team if there are questions about optimization and Unity pipeline stuff, is that he was giving a talk. There's a link in the description. It's on, I think it's posted on this channel from a while ago, about how to use the state machine animation system in Unity as a way of structuring your code in a more data-driven fashion rather than how do you traditionally use it for driving animations. I had a question to him about how this integrates to the use of that same state machine system for animation, which is really what it was built into the engine for, and he pretty comfortably and openly admitted, despite his experience, despite his accomplishments, his level of expertise in this field and, and in the discipline and the tool, I don't know, right? That's someone else's, that's a teammate worries about that. Even he at his level doesn't know every single nook and cranny of it. You learn enough to do what you need to do with it. You can do a lot of things with it before you know all of it, and you may never know all of it. So you just got to kind of not put too much pressure on yourself to learn every single bit and piece before you get started, learn just enough to get going, and then find what you need to fix you to the next level. Now, of course, in home team, I help steer people towards, I can answer their question more efficiently or direct them towards, here's what also helped other people hit the same question. That's what I make my profession and my lifelong work. But whatever your path you're learning, the same sort of thing obviously applies in lots of other fields of can't learn it all at once, may never learn all of it, do what you can anyway with the parts that you know, see how far they can get you and then fill in cracks as you go. And that's where the knowledge sticks. It's retained. It starts to, you start to see variations of it when you've kind of done reapplying what you know and build on, iterate and experiment really solidifies it. That's all I want to share today. I know it's a common problem people run into, but anyway, that's it for now. Keep making games. Catch you all next time. Bye for now.